Because Christ lives, we too shall live forever through faith in him. Amen. The word of God we want to consider today is our epistle reading for this past Sunday, which was Easter Sunday. We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 to 11, especially looking at the end of that reading, but we're looking at these verses from Paul's resurrection chapter. Paul said, Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you. Otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it was I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed. My fellow believers in Christ's resurrection, Again, when you look at Paul's resurrection chapter, those words can give us such confidence, such hope. And because the words themselves give us such confidence and hope, we're just going to again work through these words to see what the Holy Spirit is saying to us. Well, Paul said, Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved, if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. You'll notice here Paul's talking about how important it is that we need to be reminded over and over and over again of this wonderful gospel message. So that the Holy Spirit can keep on working on our hearts, so that we believe his story. And now he says we need to be reminded of that. We need to regularly, faithfully hear the word of God. We need to cling to that. And when we hear the fact that we need to cling to that gospel, what we also have to be so thankful for is that, that the Holy Spirit keeps hanging on to us, that he doesn't want to let us go. He wants to keep us safe in the faith. Paul continues, For what I received I pass on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. And now isn't this verse really just telling us the same thing that we heard in our Easter Sunday sermon as we looked at Romans chapter 4 verse 25? that beautiful summary of the gospel there where it just simply said where, where Paul was inspired to write, Jesus was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. He was raised to life to say to you and to me, you're justified, you're not guilty. Because of Jesus, you are ready for heaven. Well, Paul says, and that he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. And after that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. And last of all, he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born. Oh, well, when we think of these appearance of Jesus, we're... We're so thankful that those appearances of the risen Savior are recorded for us. They give us 
proof that Jesus rose from the dead, but in a sense, what we have to say is that it really is only the Holy Spirit working on our hearts that gives us the proof that we need. Because you see, I can't really prove to you that Jesus suffered and died and rose from the dead. I don't have forensic evidence that would prove that. I can't go to a courtroom and prove that for a fact for you. But this is wonderful evidence for us and, and for us as believing children of God, you know, the Holy Spirit, he works on our hearts so that we don't have that courtroom proof evidence, but we do have the Holy Spirit working on our hearts. And when he says he appeared to Peter, then to the 12, to the 500, to James, to the apostles, and last of all to Paul, you better believe we believe that. We believe his story. We believe what the Bible tells us because the Holy Spirit is at work in our hearts. It's not us, it's the Holy Spirit working in our hearts. So that we believe these wonderful truths. Paul said, For I am the least of the apostles and do not even deserve to be called an apostle because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God I am what I am, and this grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. By the grace of God, Paul, the persecutor of the early Christian church, he was called to be a believer, he was called to be an apostle, and what amazing grace, and that amazing grace from God, that motivated Paul to, as he says here, to work harder than all of them, Oh, he did tremendous, amazing things for the sake of the gospel, for the sake of the spread of the gospel, but it wasn't Paul. It was the grace of God. It was God's message working on people's hearts that did such amazing things. Well, Paul says, whether then it was I or they, this is what we preach and this is what you believe. The preacher, if it was Paul, the apostles, someone else, someone else today, that didn't matter, really. What mattered, of course, was the Holy Spirit working through the Word so that they back then, so that we today believe history, what really happened, so that we believe His story that we believe, as our reading says, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. And because he lives, we're going to live forever through faith in him. Amen. Let's pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, thank you for sending the Holy Spirit to us to work on our hearts so that we believe these wonderful truths that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. We haven't believed in vain. Because Christ lives, we too shall live forever in heaven through faith in our Savior. We pray in his name. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.